The Life and Sad Ending of David Crosby The singular odyssey of David Crosby remains one of the more remarkable tales in the annals of music history. As a founding member of the pioneering American groups The Birds and Crosby, Stills and Nash, he helped create and popularize the highly influential folk rock sound, forging the richly harmonic, radiantly acoustic approach that defined the West Coast music scene for years to follow. He also sold millions of records and enjoyed a cultural impact equaled by few of his contemporaries. Yet despite his often overwhelming success, Crosby is recognized far less for his artistic achievements than for his larger-than-life off-stage exploits, specifically a long and fantastically excessive battle with drug abuse that seemingly kept him teetering on the brink of death for over a decade, that he not only survived but remained as colorful and newsworthy a character as before as a testament to his continued creativity and unpredictability. Crosby was born in Los Angeles on August 14, 1941, the son of Academy Award-winning cinematographer Floyd Crosby. He dropped out of drama school to pursue a career in music, touring the folk club circuit and recording as a member of the Les Baxter Balladeers. Under the auspices of producer Jim Dixon, Crosby cut his first solo session in late 1963. Early the following year he formed the Jet Set with Jim McGinn and Gene Clark, and with the additions of bassist Chris Hillman and drummer Michael Clark, the group was rechristened The Birds. Although McGinn chiefly pioneered the Bird's trademark 12-string guitar sound, Crosby was the architect of their shimmering harmonies. His interest in jazz and Indian music also influenced their subsequent excursions into psychedelia. However, creative differences plagued the group throughout its career, and in 1967 Crosby, reportedly rankled by his bandmates' refusal to release his Ménage à Trois Opus Triad left the Birds in the wake of their appearance at the Monterey Pop Festival. After producing Joni Mitchell's 1968 debut LP, Crosby cut a handful of solo recordings and began jamming with ex-Buffalo Springfield singer, guitarist Stephen Stills. In time, the duo was joined by ex Hollies member Graham Nash, with its exquisitely beautiful three-part harmonies, strong individual songwriting contributions, and graceful folk rock sound. Crosby, Stills, and Nash's 1969 debut LP proved a pop landmark, launching all three members to greater fame than they'd experienced in any of their previous projects. The addition of Stills' former Buffalo Springfield bandmate Neil Young expanded the group to a four-piece, and in August of 1969 Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young made just their second live appearance to date at the Woodstock Festival. In the 1970s Deja Vu arrived in stores with advance orders numbering over 2 million, and through the thought-provoking social and political messages of songs like Woodstock and Ohio, they emerged as generational torchbearers of enormous musical and cultural influence. Following a sold-out CSNY tour, the group went on hiatus, and Crosby resumed work on his long-delayed solo debut, releasing If I Could Only Remember My Name in 1971. The following year, he and Nash issued the first of several duo efforts, and he also took part in a short-lived Birds reunion. Despite continued creative differences, CSNY reformed for a 1974 tour, Crosby and Nash issued Wind on the Water a year later, and in 1977 Stills returned to the fold for the multi-platinum CSN. However, as Crosby's long-standing drug problem continued to worsen, he eventually fell out with both Stills and Nash, and a planned second solo album might as well have a good time, was rejected by Capitol in 1980. A series of arrests for cocaine possession and illegal weapons charges hampered him throughout the years to follow, even as he reunited with Stills and Nash in 1982 for the top 10 hit Daylight Again. After completing the follow-up, 1983's Allies, the trio did not record together for another seven years. In late 1985 Crosby was sentenced to prison after fleeing the drug rehabilitation clinic head entered in lieu of serving out a previous jail term. Upon his release the following August, Head finally conquered his demons, later chronicling the ugly details of his addiction in the fine autobiography Long Time Gone.
Crosby, then 45, married Jan Dance, then 35, in May 1987 at the Hollywood Church of Religious Science in Los Angeles. His bandmate Stephen Stills gave away the bride. In addition, Crosby has three other children, a daughter, Erica, with Jackie Guthrie, a daughter, Donovan Crosby, with former girlfriend Debbie Donovan, and a son, Django Crosby, who was conceived with wife Jan Dance after extensive fertility treatments while Crosby's liver was failing. In 1988 a full 18 years after the release of Deja Vu, Crosby reunited with Stills, Nash, and also Young for American Dream. His second solo effort, Oh Yes I Can, finally appeared the following year as well. After the 1990 release of CSN's Live It Up, Crosby continued to suffer personal misfortunes first, he was severely injured in a motorcycle accident, and then in 1994, he lost his L.A. home as a result of massive earthquake damage. Months later, he returned to the headlines when it was announced he was diagnosed with hepatitis C and dying of liver failure, undergoing a successful organ transplant in 1995. During the recovery period that followed, Crosby met James Raymond, the son had given up for adoption over three decades earlier and a professional musician as well. The two soon began writing songs together, and with guitarist Jeff Pever they formed CPR, releasing a series of albums and touring regularly. In early 1997, Crosby, Stills, and Nash were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Six years earlier, Crosby had first entered the Hall of Fame as a member of the Birds. Young returned to the fold for 1999's Looking Forward, with the resulting millennial tour dubbed CSNY2K, heralding the foursome's first joint road venture in a quarter century. Crosby was again the subject of tabloid headlines when in early 2000 it was revealed that he fathered the children of singer Melissa Etheridge and her partner Julie Cipher. That same year, he also published a second book, Stand and Be Counted, which assembled interviews with actors and musicians to explore the intersection of celebrity and social activism. From 2001 onward, a Crosby, Stills and Nash tour became a regular and annual event, with Crosby finding safe haven and camaraderie on stage alongside his musical compatriots of over four decades. In both 2002 and 2006, Neil Young completed the CSNY lineup for their live dates, and although the politically motivated 2006 Freedom of Speech tour was very much driven by Young's muse, Crosby's Deja Vu was a cornerstone of the set and served as the title for both the 2008 live album and film that documented the tour. Also in 2006, Crosby, along with Nash, accompanied Pink Floyd guitarist David Gilmour on sessions for his solo album, On an Island, and the pair went on to help him promote the record on tour. The expansive, lavishly packaged three-disc retrospective Voyage was issued in 2007. Produced by Nash and archivist Joel Bernstein, the collection married two discs of classic material with a disc of unreleased recordings and set the template for both Nash's 2009 Reflections and Stills' 2013 Carry On. In summer 2013, Crosby began to talk about the sessions for his fourth solo album, his first in over 20 years. Produced in conjunction with his son Raymond and featuring contributions from Wynton Marsalis and Mark Knopfler, Crows appeared in late January 2014. The singer-songwriter next collaborated with snarky puppies Michael League. The pair wrote some songs together, and then debated how long it would take to record an album. League wanted two weeks, Crosby wanted a month. Working at Jackson Brown's Groove Master Studios, it was completed in 12 days. The first single, Things We Do For Love, was released in July of 2016. The full-length Lighthouse followed in October. Continuing this prolific late career run, Crosby released another full-length record the following year. Released in September 2017, Sky Trails was again produced by Raymond, and included a cover of Joni Mitchell's Amelia, from her 1976 album Hajira. He announced a coinciding fall tour of the U.S. to support the album. 
Crosby quickly followed Sky Trails in October 2018 with Hear If You Listen, which once again featured the Michael League anchored band that supported the singer songwriter on Lighthouse. That is what happened in his life, through the years that he yearned to find the right of life for himself. David Crosby is 80 years old this year, his health is no longer the same. 